a couple of years ago, there was this guy, I'm not sure what his name is, so we'll just call him Bob. So Bob, this guy Bob, he's like a traveling preacher, or he has these, sometimes these, how, how do you, revival meetings, that's what I was looking for, in different places. And anyway, this Bob guy ended up in one of, big city in America. Now, again, I don't remember what the city of America did, was exactly but it was let's, it was a big city and this church that he was doing these revival meetings at or these meetings at was located right beside a neighborhood that would have like two to three killings per week so it was pretty nasty neighborhood and so this Bob guy he went and he had these meetings and then he decided one day he's gonna go prayer walk through this neighborhood now all the people in the church, the leaders in the church were like, no, 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 we're not going to let you do that, man. That, that's insane. You can't go out and walk through this neighborhood. They're going to kill you or something. We're afraid for your life. We, don't, we won't let you. But Bob didn't care what they said and went anyway. So as Bob is walking down the street, he's praying over these houses and everything. And he comes to, I think there was like three guys sitting, sitting around. And I think they were drinking or... They were smoking or drinking or something. I don't remember. Again, the details of the story are a little bit fuzzy to me, but it is a true story. It's very, very powerful. So listen up. Anyway, he went up and talked to these three guys. And what he said when he walked up to them was, how many of you have mamas that are praying for you? Or something like that. And I think one of the guys, or maybe all three of the guys, started crying. It brought tears to their eyes, when, when, all because he said that. And after talking with him for a little while, they actually, I think all three of them, gave their life to Christ right, right there, on the spot. Isn't it crazy how the Holy Spirit works? But anyway, uh, about a year later or so, Bob went back to that community, I guess. I, again, details are fuzzy, but the point of the story is this. When he got back, he, you know, they told him that this neighborhood is, has changed so much since he was here because in the last year they only had like three murders. Instead of three murders a week, it went to, down to three a year. A little bit different, a little bit better. All because Bob lived intentionally for Christ. Sweet! We're watching the Wizife Show. In our youth group lately, we've been studying how we can live, show Jesus in our everyday life. How can we do that? What are some things that we can do? And we've been looking at a whole bunch of different stuff, but every time that we come together as a youth group in Sunday school class, we will go around and we'll tell stories about different, different things that we've done that week that was a way of showing Christ to people. Maybe it was just uplifting somebody or giving somebody a word of encouragement. Sometimes that's all that's needed. They can make a world of a difference. Just like the story that I just told you about Bob. See, he had to have intense courage to go out there and walk those streets if he knew that there was like three murders per week. But he did it anyway because he was living intentionally for Christ. And... The thing about our youth group, we have some really good stories sometimes. I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to share with you a story from a sister that she shared. See, my sister works at a bulk food store, and it's our bulk food store. I work there sometimes too, by the way. And anyway, there's this guy that comes in, that came in, that was just down and out, and was telling her his troubles to my sister and stuff. And so my sister gave him, before I left, my sister gave him a bracelet. Now this bracelet, little, there's little, um, there's these rubber bracelet things that have these words on it. I don't know if you've ever seen one. I don't have one on me right now. I should have gotten one for this video, but anyway, it's too late now. The point is, this bracelet here said, "God, something like God loves you. He always has, and He always will," or something like that. And it was around this bla bracelet, and so she just gave him the bracelet, you know. Didn't think much about it because that's usually what they do. What we do if somebody comes in that's having troubles or something like that to you know encourage them. And the guy was looked at as like we are definitely not on the same page. And was like I don't want this thing and gave it back to her. And then he just left. And then 
a day later, the guy comes back in and is like, okay, I want to apologize for how I reacted yesterday. I know this means a lot to you. And I can see it means a lot to you, this, this bracelet thing. So you still have them, I, I'll take one. So maybe someday it'll mean something to me. And see, just the fact, just the point that my sister was courageous enough to live intentionally for Christ, to give that guy that bracelet, it could it could change the guy's life someday. Think about that. Someday he'll look at that bracelet and be like, and it'll just hit him like a ton of bricks. That God is real. That God loves him. But that's all because she lived intentionally. Now, I hope you're, under, you're seeing what I'm trying to get at in this video. It's about living intentionally. If you remember last week, we talked about having this big idea that God gives you and living for that big idea and everything like that. And, but living intentionally is part of, kind of goes along with that because you've got to live intentionally for the, the goals that God gives you. And every day that you've got to live intentionally for that goal, that big idea, like for myself. Me, part of me living intentionally for my big idea is the simple thing that I feel like I need to evangelize America. Like that's part of my vision that I feel really feel honestly that God gave me. And part of that is something that I call the Life Changer Challenge that is set to come out. It's a eight week course, daily kind of boot camp course, kind of like P ninety X, just for the spiritual side of things. Anyway, it's supposed to come out in like January fifteenth, if that works out, we'll see once. But anyway, the point is as I'm doing this, I need to have these goals. I need to have goals in my life. I need to have guidelines in my life, things that I do for people, things that I do to make sure that I get it done by this set time. Like I have a whole big to-do list and have all these dates planned out. Okay, I need to have this done by this time, this done, done by this time. And then I just work as hard as I can to get it done. I need to live intentionally to get it done. Now that's a little bit different than what the stories I was telling you, but the main point is if you live intentionally, don't live intentionally for your own good self-will. Because people can do that. Like if somebody wants to get rich, then you, if you live intentionally to get rich, chances are you'll get rich. But you got to live intentionally for it. And the point is, if you want to be a good Christian, if you want to be a Christian, if you want to follow God, you're going to have to be intentional about it. You're going to have to go out and do something. You're going to have to go out and have some courage to do something. Like in the Bible even, it talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, we know the story pretty well when they didn't bow down to the idol that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up about himself. They didn't do it to bow down to him. Because of that, they had courage to not bow down to it. And they lived intentionally for Christ right there, knowing that they could die. And King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into a furnace that was so hot that the guards that threw them in died. But the three friends kept alive because they lived intentionally for Christ. And God helped them through that time. See, that's the point. That's, the, that's kind of the whole point of life. Is that if you're a Christian, you've got to go live intentionally. You've got to go out. You've got to do stuff. You've got to give pers uh, somebody a bracelet or simply take the time to pray with somebody. If you see somebody that seems down, and take the time to share Jesus with them. That's what it means to be living intentionally for Christ. So can you do that? Can you go out there today? Can you go out there this next week? This next week, here's what I want you to do. See, as a, in a Sunday school class, each week we try to have something that we do intentionally for Christ. Like this week we're praying for this one guy that used to go to our church. And that's what we're doing, being intentional about praying for this person. And it's very, very... See, I could go on and on with stories about being intentional, living, how that just... That's what it's about. If we live intentionally for Christ. But it's very, very important to live intentionally. It's very, very important to do things, to have the courage and let God lead you to do things that are hard, that people would say hard, like Bob walking into these, this neighborhood. That takes courage. But to do it for Christ. If you got the Holy Spirit with you, do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you got the Holy Spirit with you, what can go wrong? Because God is bigger than anything. There's 
if you got God in, on your side, if you're on God's side, you you have what what are you, what are you, what are you afraid of? So that's the thing. A lot of us are we're afraid to live courageously for Christ and intentionally for Christ because I don't know, we we just are, and that's not good. So get rid of that fear and decide. Make the choice. Make the the intentional choice. Today, I'm going to live for Christ. Today, if an opportunity arises, I'm going to give it to God, and I'm going to intentionally do it. Like me making these weekly videos, I could just take the easy road and just you know forget about these videos and be like, well, I don't have time to, this week. I'll just forget about it. But instead, I make time and I do it anyway. I intentionally do it, not for myself, but for the glory of God. I live intentionally for Christ. That's what matters. So anyway, in the comment section below, write down some things that we can do to live intentionally for Christ. Like one of them, like I, I mentioned, is to pray for somebody. To decide, okay, today, this week, I'm going to decide to pray for this person. But and there's a whole bunch of stuff, and I want, I want, I want some, you to share something. So right now, go comment in, in the comment section below. Share something about how you, maybe you've lived for Christ this last week, or share something that you think of that we should. For this next week, that we should intentionally live for Christ. Can you do that? I know you can, so do it right now. Okay, guys, it's time to live intentionally for Christ because that is our Wizard of Goal number 50. And yes, we're at 50, which is half of 100 if you can do the math. But anyway, the verse that I have that goes along with it is Joshua 1 9. Have it not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, this is God talking to Joshua when Joshua was just ready to take leadership. But it also is for us, too, because cause God, if God commands us to do something, and God commands us to go and make disciples of all nations, and if we follow that, we need to be strong and courageous to follow that. And do not tremble or be dismayed. We can't let fear control us. We've got to have be courageous enough like Bob was and not be fearful and not do anything because God is with us. Pretty simple. So go out there and live intentionally. This is the part of the show that you've been waiting for. It's a biblical joke of the week. I'm probably lame and a little bit of funny. Okay, here's the joke for today goes like this. There was a religious lady that had to do a lot of traveling for her business, so she did a lot of flying. Flying made her very, very nervous, so she always took her Bible along with her to read as it helped relax her on the long flights. One time, she was sitting next to a man. When he saw her pull out her Bible, he gave a little chuckle and a smirk and went back to doing what he was doing. After a while, he turned to her and asked, you don't really believe all that stuff in there, do you? The lady replied, of course I do, it's in the Bible. It is the Bible. He said, well, what about the guy that was swallowed by that whale? She replied, oh, Jonah? Yes, I believe that. It's in the Bible. He asked, well, how do you suppose he survived all that time inside the whale? The lady said, well, I don't really know. I guess when I get to heaven, I'll ask him. What if he isn't in heaven? The man asked sarcastically. Then you can ask him, replied the lady. I need you to submit your biblical joke so that I can have it on the show. Now, how, you, how to do that? Well, you can either go to wizive.com and contact me, or you can go to YouTube and create a video response. This right here, this video here, is the Wizive Show. And it's about living intentionally for Christ. Because I need to intentionally take the time to make this video every week and so I want you to live intensely for Christ anyway my name as always Justin Miller and I'm out Father, for your sake.